should I go on mute apart from my very brief spiel? Yeah, I, th I think if everybody stays on mute, um, if they're not talking at that time, it just means no background noise, basically. No kids screaming in the background. I might scream. Me too. Okay, guys, how you doing? It's uh, it's Johnny Butler here from uh, the Information Lab Ireland. I see there's a good few participants coming in already. Um, so we have 23 on board at the moment. Uh, we're going to get started uh, in a few minutes. We're just going to wait for um, a few more people to uh, come in and uh, we'll be able to get started uh, at that time. So we've got a great lineup. We've got Christian Maté from uh, Tableau, who's going to kick us off um, in a few minutes. And then Carl Alchin uh, from the Data School uh, in the UK, uh, who's going to uh, take us through various different things around data, or uh, Tableau prep and uh, various different things like that. So um, uh, cool, uh, uh, we will, uh, it's, it's probably a good time now to go and put in your virtual pizzas um, uh, if you want to put them into the oven and have them ready and crack open the beer, uh, in, unless it's too early for you. Um, and as I said, we'll probably kick off uh, formally in about uh, three or four minutes, I'd say, with, with, with another introduction and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, just to let you all know, there's 37 participants at the moment, so um, uh, we're just going to wait for a few more and then we'll get started. Okay, great stuff. Back to you in a second, guys. Okay, guys, we're, we're going to get things kicked off. And um, so thank you. We've about uh, 60 participants there now. So that's great. So we're, we're, we're happy to get things started. Uh, just a few things. Uh, if you could, everybody make sure that they stay on uh, mute, uh, please, for the duration. And if you have any questions, you can, you can send them up in, into the Q&A box that you'll either see uh, up at the top or the bottom uh, of your screen, depending on what, what you're using. You see the banner that drops down there with all those controls. And there's a Q&A thing that you can uh, you can type questions into, and uh, participants will be happy to get back to you as as uh, as the session progresses. All right, that's great. Um, so just a few things. Uh, obviously, we're we're migrating this to the online virtual world, um, and uh, but when we go back to normal, uh, or whatever that normal is going to be, uh, there will be events in the future. So we're hoping that uh, if there is anybody who wants to host an event in the future, they can get in touch with uh, either myself, if you're in Dublin, Johnny Butler at the information lab .ie, uh, or Mark Kernke, who's with uh, Groupon and hopefully is in attendance uh, today also. Um, and if you want to get in touch down in the south uh, with the Cork Tableau user group, you can get in touch with Dan. Uh, Daniel Ling, who's daniel.ling at theinformationlab.ie, or uh, with Katie Kilroy, uh, who is on leave at the moment, uh, but is always happy to uh, uh, make contact with the real world, uh, at kkilroy at arlo.com. All right, I'm going to hand over to Daniel Ling very uh, quickly, and uh, he'll just give you a few uh, words on what's, uh, what's the story with his um, group down in Cork. Thank you, Johnny. Um... Hello everyone, it's great to see such a, uh, a big attendance. I uh, hope everybody's keeping 
safe and sane at the moment, um, getting used to the, the new way of working. Um, for those that, that don't know me, as, as Johnny said, I'm Daniel Ling, consultant with the Information Lab. Uh, I'm based down in sunny Killarney at the moment. Um, the, I work with clients in, in the Southwest, so predominantly Cork and Kerry. Uh, so welcome to everybody from the, the Cork Tableau user group. As Johnny said, I'm a co-host with, uh, with Katie there. Um, I see Katie's on the call, so hi Katie, how are you doing? Um, yeah, just a big welcome to everybody. Uh, this is, I suppose, brave new territory for us all with, with user groups uh, fully remote, but we've uh, with two great speakers in, in Christian from Tableau and, and Carl from, from the Data School with some exciting new features um, and, and a look at Tableau prep and, and kind of the, the great things that, uh, that Carl and the, the Tableau community are doing with that. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll all enjoy the, the session and that'll be recorded and, and we can um, hopefully meet up at, uh, at future user groups in person. But uh, that's all from me. I'll hand it over there. Um, and I think we'll, uh, we'll kick off with, uh, with Christian up first, I think. Super. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, my name is Christian, and um, I uh, today I am gonna talk about um, some uh, great new features that they have been added to Tableau. But before we start it, I just want to mention um, a big thank you for uh, Information Lab for having me today. I would like to thank you for uh, all the users that have joined online and for like especially like everybody in Ireland, basically, I think is the first webinar uh, with all the users group from Ireland, from Dublin, from Cork. So I think it's great. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. So uh, since this is an online connection, if in case I'm going to drop off, please do stay on the meeting. I'll attempt to reconnect back. Okay, so uh, with a photo ado, I'll just get started. So I just want to mention a few things about myself. Um, I am currently working for Dublin Software, uh, part of the Dublin office, uh, where I have arrived uh, about uh, three years ago. Well, just about three years ago. And uh, prior to that, I was working with Virgin Media Ireland and uh, treasure management uh, fintech companies. And at the moment, I'm doing uh, research in business analytics and user, user acceptance, utilization, and success. So it's very academical, but mainly just just to find out what motivates a certain user use a particular software, especially business analytics. Apart from uh, work and uh, college, I like to keep fit, so I do enjoy an active lifestyle, and I do a bit of a workout pretty much every morning, sometimes at 5.30, so um, yeah, um, I am one of those early risers. And uh, just to give you a, an interesting fact about myself, um, I think I would uh, trade any time uh, for a trip into space, uh, compared to a um, sunny location. And with the little time that I have left, I usually uh, like to do some paintings. So uh, with that being said, I hope I'm not gonna talk too much. And I'm hoping that my session is gonna keep me interested and you know, not to press the X button on the, on the window there. Super, so um, as I mentioned earlier, I am gonna talk about a new feature that has been added to Tableau. Um, but I want to take a, a second and just go back for, for, for a couple of seconds, maybe. Um, Tableau Viz animation has been added um, uh, as a result of a work of um, a lot of engineers for the last five years. It's a feature that has been shifted with uh, Tableau product 2020.1. Uh, uh, it was in beta last year, 2019. And for some of the people that have been to the uh, uh, TC conference, they might have seen it, uh, the, the feature. So today my agenda is going to be very different. Uh, today of all days, I think the world is watching us, particularly the attention that every dashboard that gets around the world, particularly with the current situation. So the world is watching us and we do not want to disappoint. Today I'm going to show you why you should see first and then seek to understand and what it is exactly to understand in a dashboard. And then I'm going to show you a few steps on how to create. So. Um, Next, why should you use animation? You know, if somebody would ask you like, why would I want to use an animation? It's, it's a very simple uh, question. Um, it, it's a very valid question, but I think uh, we need to look a bit at, at the way Tableau works. Um, most of the animations in Tableau at the moment as the product itself, we know that it is easy to explore. So even the VSQL technology, it is easy to explore before. I think now we just took that one one step further. 
um, understanding becomes instant. So, you know, if you watch a movie and you get that aha moment when you understand something instantly, or you can see what X and Y is doing, that's what it is with Tableau with the animation now. Also, you get an opportunity to pre present the data in a meaningful way. And not only that, you're showing the changes you show a powerful story. So when you tell a story in Tableau, before you could see the changes going back and forth very fast, but now you have the option to actually drive the attention, the end user attention to a certain point on the dashboard. So if you wanna make your point across, if you wanna say like some differences, or you understand the time that some differences or some changes happened to the data that you're using, now you have the option. Lastly, but not the least, it is interactive visualization. So now you actually take the user and you just throw them into the story and you get them to interact with the story. So, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively new term, but visual analytics just started to become more and more used now. And having the opportunity for the user to actually interact with your dashboard, it actually gives you new powers. It's not only presenting the data, now you interact with the data. Sometimes you might wanna do, you know, uh, just testing or validate uh, some uh, some data that you're working on it, now you have the option to do it. Um, next, in here, I wanna show you the, uh, what some people call it, the Mona Lisa of user interfaces. It's a simple, dash, a simple view, um, a simple uh, user interface, but it's the Courser uh, or Blinky as some people call it. <laughs> it actually was created in 1967 uh, by Charles. And that's a technology that's still in use today. So you can imagine how many years have been passed by and the same technology is still stands on today. So that's what we did with Tableau. We took the power from the uh, physics, but from the user interface design and tried to put it all together, wrapped it up nicely so that you can use the functionality. As you can see in here, that's what it is, a Viz animation. It's simple, it's clear, and it helps you see the changes on a view or a dashboard, whichever you wanna use it. The data, it's up to you. So if we look in here, you can see the top reasons why some evictions they might take in place within a certain time and frame within a certain district in uh, San Francisco. But more than that, um, let's just talk a bit about the benefits of what you would have them as well. So you just turn them on, there is no code required whatsoever. If you have a world, old workbook that you wanna upgrade it, now you have the opportunity. But also, you know, this is not limited to, you know, certain bars or lines or circles. So you can use different mark types. And as mentioned earlier, it gives you the control to drive a journey for the user discovery joining. So the style and duration, now they can be changed even more. But lastly, you can create your own best practices. So it gives you the control in the company to create your own in your own organization even to create the best practices that you want. So if you want certain dashboards to be designed in a certain way with a Viz animation, now you have the benefit of it. Now, just to continue, let's just touch a bit on Tableau best practices because I think that's important as always, you know, knowing your audience with, with the Viz animation, it helps you even make your message even easier coming across. Also consider the display size. The same thing always stands. Format from the largest to the smallest, it's a good start. Plan for fast load and add order. This comes back to the same question that was presented a couple of weeks ago, if I remember, a couple of months ago, if I remember correctly, you know, how many views are, you know, enough for a dashboard? It's the same thing over and over again. I think you have to plan for the dashboard to be a load, fast loading times. Try to think of the end user Think of like how much data you want to put in the dashboard. So then the interaction, it becomes smooth and you know, it won't take forever to load because you know, that will test your patience if you want to wait for a dashboard to load within 20 minutes or something. Um, as always, try to leverage the sweet spot and try to test it prior uh, to sharing with the end user and also try to limit the number of views and colors. You know, removing clutter, you actually have the opportunity to pack something into simple and that helps you convey the message across. Tableau recommendations for um, uh, uh, visa, visa animations are about uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 seconds for analysis. And also for publishing, you can have it between one and two seconds. Or if you wanna have a real closer look at it, 
it might take you about between five to eight seconds. Now, we, we talked about, you know, like why should you use it? Or at least I hope I, I got your interest on why should you use it? What it is, you know. Now, how, how about I'll show you what exactly it is. So you have two steps, no more. One, number one, you just go on Tableau, you open Tableau, you go on the top menu, click format animations, and you select the button. And then from the animations on the dashboard, you select it on. From there, you can see you have different options where you can select for the dashboard or for the sheets if you wanna go for it. It is as simple as. So in here, um, there is a, a, a GIF that I uh, created uh, just in case my uh, Tableau won't work. But uh, why don't I just show you um, if, I, if my Tableau desktop will show it. So why don't I just show you? So as you can see in here, we have the option, we go from the format, animations, and then you have it on in here. So let me just give you a quick run through. Now we don't have the animation. So now if we go format, back to animation, it will show you in here. Now, if I click in here, you would see the race for a bar chart. You remember it was all over the Twitter a couple of months ago when all the charts and everybody was going crazy for the companies that they're moving up and down very fast in a nice, in a nice visual way. Now, now you have the opportunity to do that in, that, in Tableau. But think of it like the amount of opportunities that you have like with the other functionality that Tableau has. So now you have the opportunity to do that. So just to continue briefly, um, in here, you have a um, home line chart race, uh, which I found it very, um, in very interesting and I could think even amazing, uh, created by Jacob, where you can see the, the amount of um, time for the uh, players and if, if they lose performance during their career once they reach to the top. As we can see in here, Babe Ruth keep, keep on scoring and keep on performing even if it has reached the top. Now, all of this, it is possible with the Tableau functionality, but I just wanna point it out a few things or maybe just talk about more as in pre-attentive attributes. We know that Tableau at the moment has some of those attributes as you could, as you could see it on the screen. So when you create a viz or a viz animation or interaction, try also to think of like what's the color, what's the orientation, what's the shape that you're going, or even the position on the dashboard, because those are very important points. Because you want to take that journey and design that journey, even if it takes a couple of seconds, you want to make it sure that it is a great journey. I will also recommend for everybody to go on, um, on the link uh, presented below where by David Balden, where you can see a lot of recommendations for visual analytics in Tableau. Now, I talked about what animates. Unfortunately, since this is a new feature, which has been released like only for a couple of months, I would like to point out a few things that you cannot quite yet do it. So if we look at the axis annotations, pie charts, or polygons even, they, they are not at the moment, but, they're gonna be coming soon, I hope. Um, now, I showed you um, what's the power of animation. Uh, one of my, uh, my, um, my favorite quote by Henry Matisse, it says, creativity takes courage. Today, more than ever, I want you to take the courage and have the courage to be creative and to become a true data diplomat by using animations. Um, lastly, if you want to have uh, further reading on um, data visualization, uh, Mark Reed has an animation transitions where it shows you uh, various examples on how can you use them, where, especially in Tableau, if you want to go for like, okay, let's just say I have a different dashboard that I want to use it and I don't find any resources. I would strongly suggest to go there. Also, Jersha Milgon can show you some very good opportunities in terms of how can you use that with dynamic parameters, which is also a new feature in Tableau, which I think half of the Tableau community was waiting for this. Can you imagine this is a five-year-old idea that has been put it into practice? So Tableau do listens to the community. Now, lastly, I tell you to be creative. It would be a shame if I would not uh, tell you that you Today, you have the opportunity to go on Tableau Learning using this code 2020 Learning, and you can sign up and you have for 90 days where you can access Tableau Learning, where you can help to create. Thank you so much. And also, 
since this is a hands-on training, I hope I'm okay for time in here. Let's just do a quick run through it. So I am just gonna create really briefly one. So I'll be using Haas Rosling, okay? And I'm just gonna drag sheets to text, country sheets, and then to color, okay? And now we wanna look at, um, let's just say population, okay? We drag the population in here, and then I am just gonna create a calculated field. I'm just gonna give it a quick name in here. Okay, my rank. I'm sorry, I think you cannot see it. Now you should be able to see it. My rank, okay. So we use a unique rank function. We drag the sum of population in it. Oops, sorry, rank. Rank unique. Let's just drag the population, apply. Oh, oh, my rank, my rank one. Okay, apply, okay. We drank my rank one in here. Now, I am just gonna compute using country and also we are gonna make it um, discrete. So now let's just see the year to pages. Okay, so now I hope the speed is okay. Let's just give it a quick play. If you can see the differences. If not, maybe just go a bit faster. And as you can see, the year, it's starting to change. So if we give it a bit more, a couple of more seconds, you can see various uh, changes on it. Yep. So as you can see, it was very simple. It took me only three clicks, but that's not only that. I have created various options in here where we can look at it. So if we want to go for the bar chart race, we can see it. I just showed you earlier on. Uh, if we want to do this in a dashboard, um, if my tablet desktop is working, I sh we supposed to see that. So, okay. So as you can see, there are various options and the transition is very smooth. So I just want to let you know, um, you can have a copy of the dashboard. If you go to Tableau Public, uh, Christian Matei, you can download it in there. And I have included a couple of uh, options where you can use um, um, this animation with um, mark IDs, calcs, advanced calculations, and even on the dashboards and different format. And also, I just want to give you a, like a brief example of what might be too much. So as you can see, that's a lot of clutter on the page and you do not want to have that one. When you create a dashboard with the animation, it's, it's becoming too fast and there's too much on it. And uh, with that, I welcome any questions. Thank you. Christian, thank you very much for that. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can pop them into the Q and A uh, down on the down at the bottom there, and uh, fire away if you do. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you. Christian, we've one there from Rob. What is the reason for not having these animations on by default? Okay, so uh, if, um, okay, I'm just gonna share my screen again. Okay, so share screen and let's just go back to tablet desktop. Okay, so I am just gonna show you the reason why, you know, you might not have them. So if we look in here, you can see the changes. I think that's with the animations enabled, but if you do not have them, uh, anim uh, sorry, format, animations, and let's just keep it off. If we look at the changes at the moment, you can see it's quite hard to see the transition moving from one to another. Also, uh, overall the performance in terms of the uh, workbook performance from the animations, it only takes a couple of seconds. Um, it, it doesn't have a big impact on it, uh, neither on tablet desktop or tablet server. So, you know, I want to convey the message, having those by default, you tell a powerful story and there are a lot of benefits to it. Not having them, it's still an option as well. But why would you use it? Why would you not use it? 
Great. Uh, we have another one there from uh, Ajay Govind. Govind, and yes. uh, he's asking, what's the difference between sequential and yes. simultaneous style? That's a that's a great that's a great question. So um, there is a couple of dashboards in here where you have them sequential. So in here, some of the changes on the animations they are going in sequence. So it starts the first one, the second one, or the third column, and so on, where it can go simultaneously. So let's just say if we select all of these uh, five columns, they will all be moving together rather than only one at a time. So you can even take it like a journey. You know, it, it moves one step at a time, or you can do the entire thing at once. Cool. Okay, there's another one there. Dan, uh, you might want to say. Okay, I'll take that one. This is one from uh, Aaron Actas. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, can Tableau animations be worked together with any Python script, including some animations on some dashboards? So, uh, yes. Um, so if you have the animations enabled, uh, think of it like if you want to, like at the moment, if you want to use Python to embed that or to use with a different functionality for a, for a web, yes, you can do that. Uh, think of it. This is the functionality that Tableau has natively. So then if you want to take this one step further, as long as you follow the best practices and it matches the, uh, the examples or the libraries that we have them on our pages, yes, you can do that. Okay, that's cool. Um, Okay, the one more, one more, we'll take this. Uh, oh, well, that's just actually somebody just saying thank you very much. So that's not a question. Uh, so that's fine. <laughs> so if that's okay with everybody, we'll, we'll leave it at that, Christian. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, really good and uh, very engaging content. It was really, really nice. Um, and we're getting lots of people in the chat coming in. One, Laura <laughs> Gotchi basically saying thank you, Christian, and loads of compliments flying in here. Super. So thank you very much. Um, we're going to hand over to Carl yep. uh, Alchin, if that's okay. And uh, Carl, if you're ready to rock, I'll let you do your own introduction and uh, enjoy. Um, that, that was me thinking you were going to give me this rock star introduction, Johnny, and <laughs> then I had to kind of live up to that. So I can now kind of lower everybody's <laughs> expectations and then just kind of rework back from that. So uh, let, let's see what we can do. Um, first of all, thank you guys uh, all for having me and, and let me come and waffle about Tableau Prep yet again. Um, if you've not heard of me before, I work for this organization called the Data School. That's um, part of the Information Lab. I've actually been at the Information Lab for five and a half years now. Um, and I've used Tableau for getting on for eight, nearly nine years now, really heavily. And that sadly means by really heavily, nearly every day. Um, uh, so I'm actually one of the two head coaches at the Data School. Uh, I've kind of picked up loads of lessons over the years. So you might have heard of that guy, Andy Creeble, Hall of Fame Zen Master. And then that's me, Carl Orchin. So yeah, I, I joined the Information Lab five and a half years ago. And actually, I used to use the Information Lab to come and help me solve all of the hard stuff that I couldn't do. So I eventually thought I need to kind of sort myself out and go and learn it all myself. So I decided to go and join the guys to, to do that. But throughout that journey, and as, as we've kind of started to teach eight new people every, every couple of months, one thing that really kind of sung out was the, the growth of questions that started to come about this thing called Tableau Prep. And Tableau Prep is, is Christian mentioned the rise of self-service visual analytics. Really what Tableau Prep is doing that one stage before that, yes, you can go and visualize your own data, but actually having the ability to go and source your own data to go and change those questions that you're asking, go and augment what you're already talking about and take onto that next level before maybe going working with IT teams to go and kind of structure that stuff out a lot more, that becomes hugely beneficial. So what I was often getting questions for within the data school as I was teaching and from clients as well is how do you learn how to do this stuff? Because actually normally you're held at arm's length by somebody from trying to do this. And, and it was initially Jonathan Allenby, um, who is in our 13th cohort at the data school, asked me the question over the coffee machine one day of just well, why don't we not have practices to kind of do this stuff more but we could kind of do something kind of regularly um, now if if anybody has ever met me before you know that if you ask a question it's often a leading question and i'll throw it back at you so in that case what we came up with was this idea of prepping data as, as a weekly challenge within that 
Um, Jenny and uh, Tom have also come and joined us this year to kind of bulk out the squads as we're kind of tackling a few different elements. So if you're completely new to this concept of preparing your own data, prep and data is a great weekly challenge to, to be able to go and work your way through that. How do you get started on that? Well, Jenny has done an amazing post. It's called Challenge Yourself to Clean Data in a Few Steps. That pulls together some of the challenges where we're only using clicks and the actual functionality within prep rather than having to use codes. Because really that's that's the world that many of you will be facing at the moment. And it's actually kind of quite a big inhibitor of why you might not be preparing your own data at the moment. It's either hidden behind SQL or Python. And if you don't have those skills, congrats if you do, you can crack on and do some amazing stuff also in prep. Um, but if you don't have those skills, it's kind of a difficult world to get into. So we intentionally create some challenges to, to be an easy access point. I've asked Caroline, um, who's helped us organize today, to send around some of the links to these articles afterwards. So you'll have access to that. Um, also, I'll just kind of keep talking through the support channels we have, first of all. And then I'll go into what really prep is. And then off the back of that, um, I'll give you a bit of a demo in prep and depending on how much time I've got left as to how fast I have to go through that and show a couple of the newer functionality uh, bits that the team's dropping into. So some of the other support we can offer is also on the prep and data website is a separate tab on the how to prep index. This is this is everything from getting started to becoming really good at data preparation as individual blog posts to actually go and build out. Um, and I'm actually currently running a webinar series at the moment. I'll talk about that more in a sec sec second on the first four sections of the actual how to prep index. Um, but they're, all of these posts are free, easy to read and to get stuck into. That um, kind of resonated with quite a few people. So I've ended up turning that into a book, which is quite exciting. So that, that's due out, although it says March here, I haven't finished editing yet. So that's more likely to be October. But those early trials um, and those early chapters are already on the book and on O'Reilly's learning platform. And you can go and pick up a free trial for that. Um, I have a code to get an extended free trial, which obviously there's lots of great content um, on O'Reilly from the likes of Ryan Sleeper with his two books on there as well and Tableau Sensors, but lots more other great stuff as well. So have a have a look out from that. If you've just got something that's a bit more conversational that you're looking to get support from, we do have a separate space on the community forums that Kiara helped us set up, which is the prep and data space. It's not just about prep and data. We'd love this to be just about Tableau prep in general and helping you kind of work through, through those challenges. We've got our links to our solutions from, from the post on there and a little bit more, like I say, conversation community would love to happen through there. We only set that up a couple of weeks ago, so that's still bubbling up, but Tom from the Prep and Data team is looking after that nicely for us. So what am I going to talk to you about? Well, I'm going to talk to you about prep. Um, first of all, why you should be looking to use Tableau Prep and also what's new within that. So really it's, it's a whole mixture of everything um, that you've got going on to prepare data sets that you actually need all the way through to, to kind of finding out solutions, preparing data sets. Um, the reason why I say what's new is Tableau is releasing an updated version of Prep Builder and Prep Conductor every month. The, the tool's quite new, so they're working on that rapidly. So that's where some of these Prep and Data challenges come in, that we're working with those latest features where possible to let you have that chance to practice that before you have to go into that everyday world to go and kind of pick that stuff up and work with that. We've got that uh, archive of those 60 challenges now, 61 as of this morning, new challenge went out. Quite a tough one from Gwellem Lockwood at the Information Lab on the market basket analysis, just showing some of the more advanced things that you can do within Tableau Prep as well. And like I say, I'm running a webinar series at the moment. The last one is how not to need Tableau Prep at all. Because I think that's it's an always a challenge with a new tool. And I'm sure lots of you faced it when you were working with Tableau Desktop the first time that, you know, it's not a tool that's designed to do everything. So actually having that ability to step back and think about when don't you need to use the tool? And that's what I'm going to talk about at 10.30 UK time tomorrow morning is, is as key as much as actually understanding when and why you would use self-service data prep. How you go through and approach those challenges for the first time by planning those out and then looking at some of the major shaping. Um, again, I'm on Twitter uh, at Data Ninja. It's a terrible Twitter handle. 
um, but they're still there <laughs> um, and I'm sharing the recordings of those. So I need to put out the third recording a little bit later today. So prep, I've used this term quite a lot, but what do we actually mean by it? Well, prep is actually two tools. Originally, it was just called Tableau Prep, um, but very quickly it was it's kind of worked out that we need to have two different sides of this. Tableau Prep Builder is your equivalent of Tableau Desktop. It's sitting locally on your machine. It's where you're taking data in. You're then working with those data sets and then you're kind of uh, loading them somewhere else. Often when we talk about data preparation, you might have heard the term ETL, so Extract, Transform and Load. Well, in this sense, that's kind of our inputs are those, ex we're working with those extracts out of other systems. The load is pushing that data back out the other side. And the transitions are kind of those logical steps we're taking through in prep. We're, we're taking kind of simple steps sometimes, but it's those repeatable tasks that quite frankly are a mind killer within our everyday jobs. But actually having that ability to go and automate those, that once you've built something in prep, you can press play and or just rerun, suck in that new data, work its way through. So actually it's taking quite a lot of that laborious part of data work that really, if I'm honest, is tough just to kind of get through and do accurately every time. We're taking that and we're going to try and go and automate that. But it's not just a data prep tool for the sake of it. Lots of Tableau's richness in terms of its visual applications are there. For example, I took the screenshot from what we call the profile pane, where Tableau showed me a distribution of the data in the background of those gray bars. So I can see some really dodgy spellings of Edinburgh but I can also see the right one. I see that that's actually the most common spelling, thankfully, but we see where some of those issues start um, entering in. So yeah, it's, it's, it's playing on lots of your common visuals and clues that you're used to from Tableau Desktop, but just putting it into that data preparation frame. So in, in the kind of last 10, 15 minutes I've got here, I was challenged by the Information Lab Island team, thank you guys for this, to go through a whole load of kind of tips and tricks as we go through, but also just demonstrate the tool. But then on top of that, can we see some of the new cool stuff, Carl? Yes, you can. So we can go and have a look at our ranks and also how we'd work out a level of detail calc within prep as well as there. They're bits of the tool that have come in a lot more recently. So we're seeing that within the mix of everything that we're doing. So let me dive into prep and we can start seeing that. So hopefully everybody can see prep nicely. Um, we can see is... your screen, Carol. Ah, okay, cool. Um, let me dive into that. Sorry, that's that was my bad. Mm -hmm. All right, so you missed my beautiful slides. Oh well. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so within within Tableau Prep, when you first open the screen, this is this is what you've got looking back at you. It looks and feels very much like desktop. We've got our uh, initial connections. Uh, within Tableau Prep, they're hidden away a little bit more than they are desktop. We're going to be using Excel for this example. And if you did want to kind of watch this back at a future point or try the example yourself, it is Tableau um, Prep and Data 2019 Week 2. Um, so feel free to go and grab that data. I'm going to be going through it a little bit quick today, so I wouldn't recommend that. You will see flows that you've had open recently, but really I just want to point out this right-hand side. Like desktop, it's a link to a whole load of videos that are kicking around uh, in terms of the normal learning. So just in the same way that I learned Tableau Desktop back in kind of 2012, start playing around in 2010, um, you'll start to kind of see those common videos of a great way to get started. And some more blog posts off the back of that, of how to go and structure that and, and build that all through. So let's go and have a look at me building a flow. So I'm gonna go and first of all, pick my input data set. In this case, it's an Excel data set and it's hidden in my files beautifully. So let's go and look for week two. There we go. And I can just go and open that up. Um, I'm using prep on a, a Mac it is available for both tools, both Windows and Mac. So it makes life a little bit easier that way. When you load data into prep, you'll see it coming in this input step style. Um, I can go and edit my connections if I want to, um, or I can see what sheets I've got. Now, quite often with data sets in Excel or text files, you'll actually go and see um, the actual data set before you start working with it. But often with database tables, that's not as easy, especially if you don't code SQL. So I wanted to kind of show you how I normally interact with an input right from the word go. And that's by going and adding a clean step. Um, as soon as I add a clean step, Tableau changes its configuration a little bit in terms of what I see on the screen. 
So let me just walk you through the interface. First of all, this top section is what we class as the flow pane. This is where we're building our logical flow to go and manipulate that data from end to end. In the middle, we've got our profile pane. So this is where we're seeing our data. Uh, we're seeing those histograms in, in the background. Um, so that was the kind of screenshot that I had earlier within my slides. And I can kind of see a few things are a little bit funky. My header name is actually lurking within my data as well. So just like Tableau, any tool, I can right click and exclude that. But I'm going to show you something a little bit more funky than that. We've got our values. We can see what's the most common value. We actually even see where we can't fit them all on the screen, a little movable histogram to actually be able to go and search through that data set. And not only that, we get the detail at the bottom. So if I did want to go and look at where someone's tried to use Edinburgh as their password and entered that in uh, incorrectly, then we can actually go and see the data, in this case, just the one single row that is about Edinburgh. So that makes the data very easy to go and explore. Just like Tableau Desktop, one of its major advantages over other tools is that ability to explore data. That capability has been lifted and dropped into prep. Um, so here, I'm seeing the same kind of names, as I mentioned, as my data fields. So that instantly says to me, because I'm using an Excel sheet, I probably got somebody who's done something a little bit sneaky. They're formatting an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to use the data interpreter just like it is there within Tableau Desktop and go and run through that worksheet, so sheet one, and it goes and finds me the two data tables that exist. So I can actually go and bring those into my view. So my first data table, as my input, I see this kind of metadata view. That's not actually the structure of my data for the rows and columns, um, but it's just giving me that overview of the data set. And then I could go and bring in my second data set. And I see this one's more about Edinburgh. This first one's about London. So I've probably got separate data tables in my data set, and I want to go and pull those together. To do that, well, I'm first of all just going to show you, you can start documenting things within prep quite nicely too. You can go and change the color of your steps, and I like to do this, when we then go and start merging them together. And by merging together, I'm just moving the steps on top of each other. Do I want to go and union? So go and stack those data sets on top of each other, or do I want to go and join them together? But if I union, um, I can then go and create a merge of those two colors. Nice, nice little bit of documentation tips. But I'm seeing that those two data sets have been stacked on top of each other. So I've got my some terrible spellings of London and Edinburgh all together. Uh, I've got my metrics and my measures. Everything's kind of nicely ordered. Um, but I've got these table names. I don't need those. Sometimes you'll have useful data within there that you can use string calculations to go and break out. But in this case, we've got a basic data set. Now, let's go and say what we're going to do with this data set. Planning your prep is a, is a really key thing. After you've got an idea of what that input looks like, you want to think about what your output's going to be. And in our case, we want to definitely go and clean up our city names to just get back to Edinburgh and London. We can see that, but because they're different spellings, Tableau treats them as different entities. But then our metrics are all stacked in one column. If you've used desktop before, you know that we kind of want to get one column of our data per metric. So we just want to go and split those out. But to be able to do that, we actually need to go and join our metric and measure together because we can only kind of pivot one thing out to be our headers. So I'll show you how to do that with a calculation. That was our, our values and then our dates are good and we're ready to go. So part two of our magic of prep isn't just that ability to go and union data really easily or document it nicely, but we can actually go in and start cleaning up these fields. And we can do this by grouping. I could do this manually. And let's face it, that's, that's where a few of you might start if you've never done this before. That's cool, but perhaps using some clever algorithms to go and make this job a lot easier. So I can actually go and group these different values together based on how they're pronounced in the English language. Do they have common characters? They're just not in the same order, like someone's tried to spell them nicely. Or is actually the, the spelling kind of, you can see someone's tried to spell them the same, there's just the odd difference amongst them. So let's go and look at the effects of those. So if I go and group these values, first of all, by pronunciation, what we see is that Tableau starts to group this stuff together. The paperclip icon, if you've used desktop, you'll know that means a group. And you can see how Tableau's actually gone and grouped these things together. You also have a control to make this algorithm a little bit more sensitive or less sensitive, as depending on how specific you want it to be. But you'll notice I've still not captured everything. Well, data preparation is often logical steps. So it doesn't mean that we just have to use one group and replace. 
you can actually go and use common characters, which Nodonal, so our version of London that's just got the same characters just in a different order. We can pull those together. And last but not least, let's use spelling. And this looks like I've intentionally built this data for this demo. I really haven't. I just wanted to actually test what prep would do. But by using the three different algorithms there, it's actually grouped all the data correctly as we go through. You'll notice I've got this changes pane as well. And the changes pane acts almost as an audit trail as to what's gone on. And I can actually go back in time if I want to and go and see the different changes I've made as I've gone through. It's another useful bit of how we'd go and document. Perhaps I class it as an intro tool um, that can get very sophisticated, like I say, with data prep. But an intro tool because you've only really got seven things to do. These clean steps that creates my nice view profile of my data set. I can do calculations and filters within here, but I can also aggregate my data, change the level of granularity, pivot, actually reshape that data either from columns and turn them into rows or take those rows and turn them into columns. Go and actually join my data sets together or go and union, stack them on top. Or as somebody just asked a question about Python, you can use Python and R. You can go and use scripts and go and drop those scripts in in a script step to go and take prep even further than what the actual functionality is built into at the moment. And then last but not least, we can actually output our data and I'll come back to that in a sec. So to go and actually go and set up our next bit of our flow, we need to go and turn each of these metrics into an individual column. So I'm gonna go and build a calculation. So create calculated field, feels nice and familiar from our Tableau desktop days, because it's exactly the same interface. So here I'm just going to go and add a little hyphen between my metric and my measure. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to name this calculated field metric. And where you name your new calculation the same as an existing field within your data prep, it actually goes and overwrites that. So we've now gone and added that into the mix. So I've got my word Celsius added onto my metric. I can just go and remove that field now. So we're good. Next up, I need to go and actually go and make this transition, go and pivot this data around. And the way I'm going to do that is we have the list of all of our data fields. So I'm just going to go and turn each of my metrics. Um, oh, it's the wrong type. So I've gone and start to use the columns to rows pivot. I don't want to do that. I haven't got multiple columns that I want to turn into rows. I want to go and take rows into columns. One of the benefits about prep is it, it's guiding you through these steps quite a lot. It won't give you the options to do everything at every single point. It's trying to go and step you through this process as well. And also it allows you to iterate really quickly. So in this case, where I drop my metric in, yeah, it's creating a new column. But what values do I want to put in uh, my fields under those? Well, it's in this case, just my column called value. I can choose how I can aggregate this. I had a look at the data earlier. I know that I haven't got any duplicates within this data set. Then off the back of that, we're starting to look like we've actually got a clean data set got my measures of the way, the way I want, my city and my dates. If you want to, you can reorder these, but Tableau doesn't really care about that too much because at the end of the day, we're going to load this into Tableau desktop um, or potentially load it onto Tableau server. And that's my final point within this, that when you go and actually do the output, you have the option to save it as a file, either as hyper, TDE or CSV, or you can actually publish this source straight to the server. So I can go and drop this into a beautifully named default. Let's call it output two. And I can go and run this flow and publish this as a data source straight to my server. So I don't have to go through the ability to extract this out into Tableau before I go and do anything much further than that. So that's gone straight up to my Tableau server. Also what I can do within prep is not only just publish the data source, but I can actually just publish the flow too. So if I publish that flow, and let's give this a really original name of flow2, I'm killing my server admin right now, I can hear him cry in the background, click on publish. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna push that full flow up to the server. Now you've gotta have Tableau server to be able to do this, but, and you can create schedules if you have Prep Conductor, which is an add-on through the data management tools. We can talk about that offline if necessary. But this way you've got a fully automated data flow that as that data set updated, we would then go and push that through onto the server and we can schedule that to run whenever we want to, depending on what my server admin has set up as schedules. So that's really the fundamentals of prep. 
all the way from taking a data set in, cleaning it up, doing some quite complex cleaning, but in really easy ways of doing it, and working our way through. But Rob asked earlier when I was just kind of setting up this talk, hey, can we see some of the new things? And that for me comes down to a couple of different elements. Really, under your profile menu, under calculated field now, we have this ability to use fix LOD and rank. Well, let's go and show you what these look like because they look very different. With our precipitation, maybe I want to go and do a fixed LOD to average out my precipitation, see how wet it is in each city. Well, in that case, I need to go and group that by each city. Not only do I see what the answer is coming back, but I also go and see the distribution of the data. So London's got a lot bigger range of precipitation than what Edinburgh has. Edinburgh's just wet. We can also see the values that come off the back of it and also go and name this uh, average city precip um, to know what we're actually got coming off the back of that fixed LOD. So LODs, we currently have only fixed, include and exclude. If you think about how that works with dimensions within desktop, is a lot harder to potentially wrap your head around. Now, ranking works in a very similar way. If I want to go and rank what of my hottest days within my data set, I go down, create a calculated field, pick rank, and it is also part of this more visual designed way of actually looking at what is within our data and how we're doing that. Maybe we just want to go and look at the hottest day per city as we go through. We create the rankings. You can choose what type of rank you want to do. And again, if I click on done, that would have our ranking of our temperatures from hottest through to the coldest. But really very quickly, you can start piecing together these different parts of the view to do lots of maybe the harder work. So when you then go and publish it to server as a data source, you're taking away some of that complexity that we've seen through table calculations and level of detail calculations in desktop itself. Obviously you wanna find the, the kind of borderline between that of not taking away all of the flexibility that your users love from Tableau Desktop. But at the same time, you might wanna make that barrier to entry and barrier to that visual analytics that Christian was mentioning earlier. Take that a little bit lower by doing some of the hard work in the prep level. And that's really what Tableau Prep Builder is giving you that option to do, to really go and start working on those data sources and making life a little bit easier as you go through. So at that point, I'm gonna stop. I'm conscious that was quick. So like I say, we've got the webinars out there where I go into this example in a lot more detail in that first one from earlier this week. Um, the links you can find on my Twitter profile um, and also all of the prep and data exercises out there. So this was week two, 2019, if you wanna go and have a go at that yourself. So at that point, I'm gonna stop and let Johnny ask some questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one question from Philip uh, Fernandez. Uh, he, you mentioned a webinar earlier. Uh, how can we register for that? Yeah, so let me just share my screen again really quickly. And you'll have seen that if I'd have shared my screen properly the first time, but I didn't. <laughs> um, we've got a webinar series on the meetup group. So if you go to meetup.com and search for Let's Talk Data, you'll find a webinar series called Think Like a Data Prepper. And, and that's me talking about the kind of four early steps within the kind of ways to get stuck into self-service data prep. And they're also covered in the how to prep index on preppingdata.blogspot.com. So why- What time is that at tomorrow? That? That's at 10.30, 10.30 Great. tomorrow morning. Great, we, we, I should say at this point, it seems like a good time, but the Information Lab also has a webinar at 10.30, uh, Ireland Tabla for Finance. Um, so if anybody wants to join that tomorrow, there's still room, uh, virtual room, uh, and I'm going to hit that into the chat, uh, the, the webinar chat there, so you can follow the link and register if that's okay. Sorry for the competition, Carl, but I, it's, I, it's I think there's, pl there's plenty to go around. It, it's those finance data preppers that I feel bad for, Johnny. They've got to pick which one. Mine's <laughs> yeah, they've recorded. got to choose. That's, that's what yeah. it is. You know, they've got to choose between the two. So that's I'm, cool. I'm sure so my jokes will be worse, so I'd go to yours. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so I've got an anonymous attendee, right? Okay, so hello. I use Tableau. I just better read all of this. In case. Okay. I use Tableau Prep at the moment, but I'd like to get into complex techniques like Alteryx workflows. Where can I find Tableau Prep challenges to practice? Yep, so, so prep and data is a great place to go for that. Some challenges are definitely harder than others, um, without doubt. Sorry, let me just move some of the Zoom control around. 
So under prep and data, there is a, the challenge index. And within the challenge index, you'll now see that we've got 60, 60 different challenges that need to add today's into that mix as well. Um, but everything from building spider charts and preparing your data to do that, all the way through to week three for both of the years has been pretty tough. So using scaffolding as a technique, which will also help uh, in Ultrix as well, but also working out the MBA standings from just all of the game results. There's a whole load of funky use cases in there. Uh, we run a fake soap company to help us do these. So Chin and Beard Suds Co. Uh, there's a few kind of specific examples around that, but there's a whole load of different use cases that you can read the challenge post and see what's suitable for you within that. And um, if you really want to know the hard, harder challenges, drop me a line on Twitter and um, I'll respond with those right challenges to go for. Cool. Dan, you've got a question uh, from somebody else. I do. Thanks, Johnny. Hi, Carl. That was, that was excellent. Uh, the question from Charmy is, hi, Carl. Can you please explain publish as data role option on individual columns? Yeah, the data role is an interesting piece. And I, I think Rob kind of mentioned this last user group that you don't just have data roles that Tableau's produce. So if I, again, just share my screen and go back into prep quickly, you'll have noticed that you have this ability to okay. under your data types to go and talk about these data roles. So that's where Tableau is looking at, does, does that data um, item actually look like a valid URL or a valid email address or meet some of those geographic roles that we see within Tableau desktop already. But the ability to publish the data role is that taking something that's specific for my business. So if I have a specific user ID or customer ID, it's a certain format, I can publish that as a role to, um, to be used at a later date to then go and set my own data roles to see whether those, those data items that I'm working with, whether they're actually valid user IDs or not in that case. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, there's a question here from Charmy Jetva. Uh, hi, Carl, can you That's please- we, we're just done. Oh, sorry. But well, there was one there a minute ago. Um, I think Christian's taking that one live. It's about the, the version to use. Oh, yeah. So that's that's just about an up uh, an upgrade, isn't it? I think. Or, yes. Yeah. So uh, if you have a 2019.2, uh, the new feature with animation, you can use it only with the latest version that has been published uh, about a month ago, 2020.1, starting with it. And um, But uh, what I want to add into that, if you have any workbooks that they were created with 2019.2, you can bring them across so you can update them if, you, if, it, is, if it is needed. Ooh, that's great. Cool. Um, just seeing if there's any more coming in there um, at the moment. One more, Johnny, from... Uh, do, 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 do. Let me have a look. Um, Raphael, I believe. Uh, uh, is there a missing data imputation module? I believe that's around the way you brought in one separate tables in it. Um, that's my interpretation of the, the question there from Raphael Lee. Is that right, Carl? Yeah, so, so, so in, by imputation, there isn't necessarily something to add brand new rows within prep at the moment. Um, so what we do is a technique called scaffolding. Uh, and I would actually go to the how-to post on that. Again, let me just go and share that on the screen. With the how-to posts, um, I do go and talk specifically about um, scaffolding because there is a brilliant technique that Bethany Lyons, one of the Tableau employees, created a long time ago now. So it's a couple of years old, but she really just completely changed the game. Instead of having to build out all of your own individual um, data points for each individual valid um, piece, you can actually just use numbers to do that. So I talk about what scaffolding is in this post, what challenges scaffolding addresses, which that imputation is part of that, the old technique, but also the new technique within there. So if you're, if you're trying to battle going and building out those rows further and making sure you've got all of the records that you want to do, uh, scaffolding is a great way to go. Otherwise, you just need to go and fix some of that underlying data, sadly. That's not, it's not a perfect art to, to get through that. But yeah, scaffolding is a great technique to look at. Great. Um, we, we have one from Rob Carroll as well, we'll if, you, if you want to have a look at that. Uh, he, he's wondering, can Carl reveal any exciting new features we might see in the future? Uh, test, testing my Zen NDA. Yeah, so as I became a Zen this year, it means I get to see 
uh, new features coming up. So this is where I see a bead of sweat go down Christian's brow here as a Tableau employee to, to see what I'm about to reveal. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to mention two things that were announced at the conference last year. So Christian, breathe. It's okay. Number one is write to DB. So at the moment, we have the ability to write to CSV files as well as hyper or TDE files. So Tableau data extracts um, in prep at the moment. Write to DB is coming. I'm not, don't know when I don't have the power over that. I want it soon. Um, I've started playing with a few early versions. It's looking good. Um, it, it took me three seconds to write a SQL table the other day from opening up my data set, preparing it, and actually writing flight is amazing. So good. Um, so write to DB was announced at the conference last year. It's coming. Um, people start to worry about that in terms of permissions. You will only have the permission set by your database administrator in the same way that you already do if you work with SQL. So breathe, it's all good on that front. The second one's the bit that I've been missing for a while, incremental refresh. Currently, when we run our Tableau flows, it's like a full overwrite. Incremental refresh is in 2020.2 beta that's available at the moment that actually everybody can get involved in. So if you go to prerelease.tableau.com, so that's prerelease.tableau.com, you can register and see what those new features are coming up and start testing those. So then you'll be ready to, for your company to go and pick up those new versions of Tableau um, a lot quicker and a lot sooner to kind of get those benefits of all of the hard dev work that's going into this. Um, Kiaris has mentioned that the Salesforce connector is coming to prep. It is, it's <coughs> going to be one that's great for us. So it's in desktop already. We've got some great functionality. We're connecting to Salesforce that's coming to prep. That's being tested at the moment. So if you're a Salesforce customer and, and you've got Tableau prep available to you, we'd love to have you test that and go and see some of those common tasks that you're doing with Salesforce. Um, does prep help add some extra data in from inside your organization that's not sitting within Salesforce at the moment? Um, we'd absolutely love to see that happen too. So thanks for the nudge on that one. Excellent stuff. Uh, Carl, I, I don't see any uh, more questions coming in right at the moment. Um, so if you're happy to wrap it up there we can do that uh, christian is there anything you wanted to add oh hang on one more yeah um just to add um like apart from the beta as well uh if people can go and check like what's coming soon by the product they can explore all the new features by the product and you have a brief description on each one of them in there so for example ask data improvements they're going to be coming quite a lot uh, web data connector as well there are like some of the options that they're coming um action improvements uh various metrics and also uh particularly api updates and um there is obviously like a world of opportunities in there where you can test and play with it. Or like, even if you want to geek out and find out more, you can go there. Great stuff. Um, Carl, anything, anything else you wanted to throw in there? No, thank you for, thank you for having me today, guys. Oh, Always brilliant nice to, get to have you. So come and talk to you. So it's um, yeah, available for whenever you want. I will happily talk to anybody about prep at any single time. So, if anybody has got questions or weird oddities, um, then just give me a shout and, and happy to try and help you solve those. Yeah, brilliant. And listen, uh, both to both Christian and uh, Carl, uh, sincere thanks. Uh, you know, and any time you want to jump on a plane and come over to Dublin for a few or for a pre presentation, I mean, uh, feel uh, feel uh, free to do so. And Christian, uh, we had lined you up scheduled for the actual. Um, Tableau user group. Um, so I hope that we'll get you again for uh, one when we get back into the real world. I, I really enjoyed your, your presentation, I have to say. So um, uh, it, it was uh, great for a kind of a, a novice Tableau user like me. Um, uh, and uh, it was wonderful to get those insights. And um, look, if, if, that's, uh, if that's all for now, uh, I'm going to close this uh, first uh, Tableau user group, uh, Ireland. And uh, thanks to everybody in Cork and Katie, I see you there on the screen. Great to see you. Um, and uh, thanks for joining in. I hope everybody's okay. And uh, yeah, keep in touch, as I said, uh, with, with myself, Dan, Katie, or Mark. And uh, if you want to host one of these events uh, in the real world, when we get back into the real world, please get in touch with me, johnny.butler at the information lab. Uh, dot IE and sincere thanks to everybody and take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks a take lot, care. guys. All Thank the best. Too. Bye bye. Oh, I'll hang on. I'll be the last to leave so everybody else can check out. I'll just make sure everybody's okay. Don't forget to bring your coats.
<laughs> grab some pizza on the way out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 